coffee time. It begins. Uh, all right, so I'm all watered, all fed, all good to go. I'm about an hour away from our first uh, big event for the day, which is a repeat of the Fiano Masterclass that we ran in Sydney that we're now running in Melbourne. But I have to get there a little bit earlier uh, to pour basically all the Fianos in random sequence, completely blind, for a particular person who I admire and respect a lot in our industry, uh, a gentleman by the name of Max Allen, will be um, gracing us with his presence for the masterclass, which is a very surreal moment for me because I still remember Max talking about Fiano, which inspired me to get into it. I was like 15 years ago, if not a little bit longer. Itinerary sent through from our distributors. It looks like another really cracking week here. We've got around about 30 meetings across uh, four days, plus the masterclass, which generally will attract around about 30 different uh, clients in and of themselves, as well as some really fun dinners where I'm catching up with some friends. So it's gonna be pretty fun one. Uh, Melbourne is a very different vibe to Sydney. Anyway, I'm looking forward to getting in and out amongst it. Let's rock and roll. Lovely people, lovely people. Northside Wines, thank you. You guys rock. All right, where to next, my man? Back to the city. Back to the city. You're gonna get so sick and tired. Oh, of this. You... <laughs> Goodness, how many have we got? Luckily, it's not just me today. <laughs> Nick had to go and find a car park. It seems to be a bit of an issue, obviously, in Melbourne. But um, at least I get this lovely walk down Hosier Lane. For those who know, very famous lane for street artwork. All right, where to next? Uh, to La Ponte. Ah, I've heard about this La Ponte place. Seems to be pretty good. That's all right. <laughs> This is a wine store. This is sick. What am I drinking tonight? What am I drinking tonight? The Ponce. Oh, yeah. Maybe just some cheesy Commando G's. Let's go. Let's freaking go. Right, so all done and dusted for the day. About to just grab my shit out of Nick's car and then Uber to dinner. A little bit more longevity. Getting older. Ooh, let's get a cheeky bottle of malign Chardonnay here. All right. Ooh. All right. So. Back at the apartment, end of the first day of trade work in Melbourne, uh, and I have clocked up with six meetings, a masterclass with about 20 in attendance, but it's like 10.30 now, no, 11. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty wrecked. Hopefully at least a couple of hours kit before we start again tomorrow, but it's back on. Good night. Good morning, it is Wednesday. And I have already smashed our gym, big tick. Uh, back on that uh, weird scrambled egg omelette vibe, but it's something that's pissing me off. It's really getting to me. It's grinding my gears. How's about this? See if you guys are like this. So check this out. So this is what a wonderful, cool looking kitchen, right? You know, super cool, hyper minimalist. I'm not a tall guy. I'm like, I'm under six foot and like, I have to do one of these ones just to clean the dishes. That is the most kitchen designers out there. Don't do this. It's dumb. It's stupid. Good morning. Oh, dude, look at that. Ready to go with bottles in the door. I love that. Good morning. Hello, sir. How are you? I gotta say, of like, in terms of like reps cars, your car is very clean. 
Yeah. It's very tidy. Particularly with the toddler as well. It fucks it up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> She's pretty good actually though. She is good. Do you still have your YouTube channel? The is that the deep dive? Yeah. No, oh, we needed a break. Too oh, tired. <sighs> Burnout, man. <laughs> creator kids, burnout. Kids. Kills another good creator right here. That's a really Boys wet ball. ball. <laughs> Boys Sorry, I was a bit quick, but we'll um, catch up. Cool, cool. Take Thank you. Thank you. All right. Ciao, ciao. Satoshi's great. Nice hey. to it. And such He's a, a nice, sick dude. Such a nice dude. So he was uh, really high up in vintage sellers and he was like, nah, fuck this corporate stuff and just woke him that place. Oh, wow. Yeah. He was one of their head buyers. Just as a sideline, I really want a mini Lego version <laughs> of, yourself. of myself. I uh -huh. think I think that'll be a great like to present to, to buy. No, to buy the rest of the, the crew oh, at right. home as well. Everyone gets a little Lego <laughs> version of themselves. I think is a great little Christmas present. So that's going on the list. That was very, very cool. The view oh, is astronomical. Stupid. All right, where to next? We will go to Harold's. 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 All right, see you soon, Harold's. Describe to me, I just want to capture this. What's actually happening right now? So there's a dinner on tomorrow. Yes. And? The soiree of the Australian Club. It's quite a dinner. Yeah. And the wine is still not there. This is for a brand that you represent. Yeah, that's it. It's on tomorrow night. The wine hasn't arrived. And currently, what time is it? It's five o'clock. Yeah. There's right. nothing I can do now. I'm screwed now. But it has to get there before midday. So I told the owner of the warehouse, he has to put it in his jag and drive it there tomorrow. I'm like, it has to get there. And what happens if it doesn't? We'll set fires to the warehouse. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Something like stop beat the poor Melbourne stuff, which is even more embarrassing. This is why distribution matters. This is the unseen work of angels. <laughs> See you, dude. Thanks for the day. See you, Friday. Enter stage left. We have a new rep. <laughs> we are going to a public tasting at... South Yarra Cellars. South Yarra Cellars. All right, so I'm not content with just selling our wine. I'm going to be selling Dr. L. <laughs> <laughs> around the bar as well. I've seen the best value Riesling, literally, that we're tasting on the show in years. Let's go have some tastings with people. Back in the apartment, uh, all done and dusted for the day. It is 9.30. So pretty early night, done pretty well. Great event at South Yarra Cellars. So thank you so much uh, guys for putting it on. For those of you who rocked up from the channel and from the Discord, you know who you are. Thank you, seriously. It is very surreal experience having like, you know, people that we have been one way relationship effectively, being able to actually put faces to names and have your support. Honestly, it is awesome. Have a slightly earlier night because the next two days are pretty freaking hectic. Anyway, time to go. Welcome to Thursday. All right, today on the road with Michael. Hello. Uh, second meeting of the day, already had a great one at uh, Punch Lane. Lane. All right, where are we to now? We're to Dawson. Cool, let's That's go. Cute. So as you've seen when I do updates in the mornings, I look pretty rad shit <laughs> until I have coffee, but I can totally, I can totally empathize with this. That's awesome. Go to work. This is the typical wine sales rep in his natural habitat. Wheeling and dealing, securing meetings, and generally handling lots of wine logistics. <laughs> All right, noodle time. Time for noodles. This is an absolute picture perfect sunset at the moment it is like blue skies all around barely any clouds sun setting behind the city and it's just this got this silhouette man 
the music, the vibe, could be the hazy IPA that I just had. <laughs> the buzz. <laughs> could, be the, could, be, could be the buzz. This is like intense, dude. Uh, I'm so full. Nick ordered so much food. It was so good. Good night. Last day in Melbourne, we've got a lovely string of about five or six meetings before going to another great public tasting at La Pont in South Melbourne, where I get to actually be reunited with Noah because Noah's been flying all the way around Australia as well. He did like Brisbane last week, Perth this week. Even though I'm in Melbourne and he's based in Melbourne, go figure. So we'll be catching up tonight. Uh, we'll get to meet up with him and hopefully meet up with a whole bunch of you guys um, at the La Pont tasting. <laughs> How you been? Yeah, good. Oh. I got an R in there. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was, I was the inside. That's cool. All right. Yeah, so you kind of choose what you Step. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, apparently, the winemaker was late. I had to step in. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see you now. He's here. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah. Give us a rundown. What have you been up to in two weeks? Uh, went to Brisbane. It was hot. Sold heaps of piss. Came back to Melbourne. It was cold. Didn't sell any piss. Went to Perth. Sold heaps of piss. Now I'm in Melbourne. Sold heaps of piss. We sold some piss. Oh, he's gonna make us drink his piss. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Two weeks ago. All right. So. End of the day, it's 11 p.m. Tasting at La Ponte and awesome, of course, catching up with Noah. We even managed to actually get off to a pub for dinner and watch our favorite footy team win. Anyway, uh, end of a big trip. I'll do a bit of a recap tomorrow after I managed to actually get a couple of hours sleep because I gotta catch a plane. Anyway, yeah, sales, crazy night. <laughs> So now that we're back at the farm, um, I thought I'd provide some sense of, of closure or recap to the last couple of weeks as hopefully I've managed to, to be able to showcase to you guys uh, what life is like when you're selling booze uh, on the road. And also the sheer dichotomy from like uh, literally being in some of the most amazing restaurant spaces in Australia. And that's the sort of, I guess, variability that you can actually get in the wine industry for those that are thinking about um, you know, having a career in it. But also, uh, you know, what I really wanted to showcase uh, to you was the, um, like firstly, how distribution works and how like the cold, harsh realities of growing a, a young independent wine brand uh, on the road is. There was about 60 or so meetings in Sydney over the week. There was a around about 30 something in Melbourne. Noah did 40 in Brisbane the week prior. And then around about 30 something in Perth the same week we we're in Melbourne. So it's, it's kind of happening all the time. It's kind of never ending, which is sort of the cadence that we like to operate at. And that's not for everyone. We have a, a winery at a, a, with a set amount of wines that we make every single year based also on the price point uh, where we have to perform to a certain rate to kind of like just have all of this kind of work and to grow at like a, a nice uh, steady controlled rate. One thing I wanted to, cause I know there's a lot of people who are pro and against distribution or wholesale. Distribution isn't for every wine producer, um, that's for sure. But there is a bit of like a weird myth in the industry that distributors largely just act as, as middlemen uh, and therefore because they're middlemen, jack up the cost, which is at least in our experience, fundamentally incorrect. It is categorically incorrect. I don't know, I don't. I definitely know that I could not do the work that you guys just saw over the last two weeks, let alone, you know, as well as having Noah as well, uh, you know, in two different places with a very, very high cadence of meetings and getting the word out there. We wouldn't be able to do that without, uh, without uh, distributors who are exceptional at being able to manage the relationship between us, of course, 
and their clients, their customers, uh, you know, many of them are you, uh, that support us and our products. I know for a fact that if I were to have to pay for a full-time representative in a place like Sydney or Melbourne, I would need to actually jack the price up of my wines to be able to afford it. Otherwise, I would need to try to find a way to be able to increase the volume of sales through their market, which means forcing the brand upon people, especially as a, as a young brand where people are still learning about it for the first time. It would just be, in effect, very inappropriate. So distributors largely allow portfolios of small producers access to some of the most important clients and customers that a wine brand can get in front of. Distributors and, and importers are absolutely critical. So shout out to everyone who is a distributor who, who uh, or works for a distributor who's watching this because thank you. <laughs> And we know it's not an easy job. Anyway, I can hear the machines working out the back here. I'm pretty sure you probably might be able to as well. I need to go and check to make sure that we're not breaking pipes or underground services. Thanks so much for chiming in, of course. If you like this sort of stuff, definitely pass commentary on it. If you are a distributor, I wanna know whether or not we stack up or any advice that you've got. Anyway, I'm gonna sign out. Have fun, guys. Hopefully you've been mildly entertained. <laughs> Cheers.